the most important thing for both you as well as for, for your audience is that you make videos you enjoy making because that will make the videos a lot better and that will also make your videos more enjoyable to watch. In general, if you're honest about what you're doing and you really actually care about the stuff that you're talking about, that's going to come through. So as honestly as you can, explain the things you are. Don't be afraid to share your to share the places where you failed. Hey, you probably just opened this video because you're a content creator and want to be as successful as this guy. Jonas Tyrola is part of the team that created Islanders and he is currently working on this awesome platformer Will You Snail? I enjoy seeing stuff die. Or this guy. Wim Lark is currently creating this gorgeous local multiplayer called Monkeys with Guns. Or this girl. Zyger is the developer of this beautiful 2D pixel art RPG called Evoken. Or maybe even like this guy. Getting your first 1000 subscribers is difficult. Really difficult. I've been making videos for almost one year before I hit this magical number. Now I would like to share my learnings with you. So sit back and watch this video until the end to learn as much as possible. Before you even start your YouTube channel, you should know why you want to make videos. You have to provide value, you have to help other people. It doesn't make any sense to create a YouTube channel in order to help purely yourself, to get views, to get sales for your game. That alone will not work. You need to help other people along the way if that's in the in the form of entertainment or if you, that's in the form of providing information. That's up to you. But if you want it to work, then you need to help others. If your videos don't provide any value for the viewers, then why should they watch them? And what's important to understand is that you need to provide some sort of value. People don't just watch your videos because they want to help you. They actually want to get something out of watching your videos. Um, so the value they get out of watching devlogs, for example, is they get to feel a little bit like a game developer. They get an inside look into your life as a game developer. If you can give them some insight, some behind the scenes look and that fantasy of being an indie game developer, that is something you should do in indie game devlogs. Find out what you think is interesting and make appropriate videos. If I'm going to find it interesting, then I would hope other people would find it interesting. So I'm really trying to make something that is a quality and of an interest level to even myself. So that way there's no like later just like, oh yeah, that's kind of boring. And then because who's going to want to watch it if it's boring? If you think it's boring, why would anyone else not? Really is what I go with usually. For me, it's more interesting when you're learning about the thought process of why decisions were made as opposed to just the technical details of what was done. So I guess to explain that a little more, like you could do a devlog where basically you add a camera system and you could just go into detail that's almost tutorial like saying, this is how I did it and here's all of the steps I did. As opposed to going into, I, f I find it more interesting to say, here's the camera system that I went with. I looked at these other camera systems. This is the why I cho this is why I chose the one I went with, and here's the reasons why. I think it adds to the player's enjoyment of the game because X, Y, and Z. That's what I find interesting personally. Is more the thought process that goes into the design. Everyone has his or her own experience and backgrounds, so everyone likes other stuff, and that's making it even more interesting and, and increases the variety of different and unique videos that are out there. Making a devlog is completely up to the person and what they want to do. I think the way you can make it interesting is showing viewers what you're particularly doing and how you are doing it. Because multiple times I get questions from people asking me, how do I do this in a devlog? And I think making it more interesting is make, showing the viewers how to do a certain thing. So for example, if I have a, um, I have a devlog where I made a new attack system. So showing them how I implemented that, I think makes it more interesting as viewers can actually expect something from the devlog. Uh, of course, uh, you've got to try to make the videos as entertaining as possible because entertainment is another important source of value or another big value factor in, <laughs> in videos like these. So your job is to find out what you think is interesting and make videos about it. For me, I like to share all the fun and interesting stuff that happens during game development. All the different 
bugs and strange thoughts that I have while programming and making games, I would like to share them and I think it's it's really interesting to show this to people who don't have this experience and want to know what making games looks and feels like. Now that you have found the topic you want to make your videos about, it's time to create them. And let me tell you, your first video will most likely suck. <laughs> and, and that's totally fine and normal and everyone first videos sucks, that's how it is. But let me tell you, you have already been successful when you pushed that upload button and the first big step has been done. But to get more views and hence more subscribers, it's not enough to just upload a lot of shitty videos. The, the big question, what's more important, quality or quantity, definitely starts tilting more and more towards the quality side. YouTube really likes quality videos, promotes quality videos. Um, sure, you can get views with, uh, with just making a lot of videos, but I feel like you get more bang for your buck um, if you focus on quality instead. So take your time with your videos, try to make them as entertaining as possible. So you need to improve the quality of your videos. Let's see how you can do this. So I actually did multiple things. I think as you continue doing YouTube, you will learn um, new ways to improve your content just naturally from viewers suggesting things. I think the biggest thing is spending more time on them. At the beginning when I made videos, I would not spend that much time editing them, for example. Nowadays, I spend a long time editing them. And I think that just comes kind of naturally because viewers give you suggestions of what they want to see, what they want to, what you want to change and whatnot. And as you continue doing YouTube, you typically want to make the next video a better, better, better as it goes. Also of that, I think it's just typically spending more time on the thumbnails, on the video itself, recording it and then on the editing because for example my first few videos i would um do them in one take but nowadays it usually takes me quite a couple takes to do it because i want to keep it perfect and whatnot and i think just having the motivation to make your newest video better than the other one is what improves the quality and it kind of occurs naturally as you continue doing youtube audio learning how to get somewhat decent audio i've fought with audio since day one it's been my biggest nightmare and I found something that somewhat works, but it's still not great. So at least getting, I mean, I went from using a more expensive microphone that was a lot harder to record with to a cheaper microphone that I figured out how to make work, which allows me to get more done. So it's really, I think, if, as long as you can find a good balance of an efficient workflow, as well as decent quality. Maximizing the entertainment factor of the video, so fast editing, coming right to the point, editing out all of the fluff, and usually that involves recording a lot of different, different video footage. So I do screen recordings, I record real life footage with my camera, and the more different and the more varied footage you have, usually the more interesting your final video is gonna be because you can mix it up more often. Usually I feel like the videos that mix it up more often are more interesting to watch because if you have an entirely new camera perspective or if you switch back and forth between real life recordings and camera and the screen recordings that makes it a lot more interesting than just one guy sitting in front of a camera for 10 minutes straight. So try to mix it up, record a lot of different footage because that allows you to mix it up and then fast editing, uh, mix up the music every now and then, keep it fresh, watch your video a lot to see which parts are boring and just Keep improving the video. Try and show interesting things on screen, especially in the times when you're speaking about something that has nothing to do with what you're showing. So if you're explaining a concept or you're talking about some idea or something, have other visuals on the screen that somewhat relate to it, but also just are more interesting. I've seen a lot of devlogs where people will just leave the screen of the code up for a minute or two while they talk, and you're going to lose viewers in that scenario. I, I come from an advertising background, so I'm very used to losing a user or somebody looking at your stuff within about a second. Um, that's about how much time I have to catch someone's eye. So anything that's left on the screen that is not visually interesting for too long, if it doesn't need to be explained, I would try and throw in just even just B-roll of your game or something you've done during the day, just some gameplay footage, something more interesting than just a static screen. You really have to be willing to learn. For example, I really realized that recording different kinds of videos and mixing it up a lot helps a lot watching a lot of other youtube videos helps seeing what they do so keep keep learning but be careful not to 
overthink everything. There are two major pitfalls you can fall in. First, don't ignore quality. Watch your videos, see which parts were great, which parts were not that great and see what kind of mistakes you make. I know it's very cringy to look at your own videos, especially in the beginning when you aren't used to it, but it's very important. If you don't watch your videos, you don't see what you have done wrong and uh, therefore you will keep continuing making the same mistakes over and over again. Second, don't be a perfectionist. There is not such thing like a perfect video. And if you try to make your videos perfect, then you will have a great perfect channel with zero videos. Just try to improve with every video you make. Experiment with different new stuff. See what works and what doesn't. See what kind of content your viewers enjoy and what you enjoy and of course make more of the good and great stuff. To sum it up, make a video that you enjoy to watch. But even when you are creating good quality content, chances are that you don't get as much traffic as you would like. Spending hours on a video just to get a handful of views can be really frustrating sometimes. It's difficult to stay motivating during these times. So what can you do to keep the motivation up? The way I st um, stayed motivated, as you said, my first video didn't get that many views at the start. Now it's got a lot more because people have started watching me. The way I probably do it is going on YouTube and finding other content creators that have been doing things for a while. It doesn't even have to be on YouTube. Sometimes I will find a game, for example, online that I like and that will keep me motivated. It's particularly when you're working on a project, for example, I'm working on my game Awoken. Finding a game that motivates you to make this game kind of helps me motivate myself. And what I mean by that, for example, I've got a motivation to complete my game Awoken. And by doing so, I make devlogs through it because whenever I add a new feature or something, I will make a devlog and that's what motivates me. But I think the biggest motivation to me is going online, finding other content creators or other games that are cool. Because for example, say I find a game that I really like. Um, I've got this mindset where I want to create this because I think it would be so cool and I would be really proud of myself if I was able to create this. So that's sort of what mo motivates me. Figure out a schedule, whatever it is, and stick with it. Um, that is like the number one thing. If you, everyone, everyone can make one, making two is pretty hard, but doing it consistently, like say you like, I, I signed up to do the monkeys with guns devlog. I started saying I was going to do it once a week on every Monday and I'll tell you every Sunday rolls around when I usually produce the videos. And i said the, I spend most of the day being like, I don't want to do it. I should skip it. But once you start that, it's a slippery slope. So if you can keep yourself consistent, if you can force yourself to just like, no, this is the schedule I've set and don't make it crazy. Like once a week was a bit nuts and I probably shouldn't have done that, but it is what it is now. That's the schedule I'm on. But as long as you can make a schedule so that people know that, okay, they're going to be producing a video every X amount of time, they can go back and people can come back and see it. And also by doing it consistently, that means that within a shorter period of time, you will have a more videos of a backlog. I get most of the people that I get comments from now are saying that they found my channel and gone back and watched all of my devlogs kind of like in a, you know, just in a big binge, which is really cool. And if I had been really spotty with that, there wouldn't be that many for them to go back and look at. So it's really a matter of just consistency and putting in that time. And you're just going to get better by doing that every week. You're going to find a better workflow. You're going to really move through. So find other content that motivates you, set a schedule and stick with it. And don't get discouraged by low few numbers. Set your expectations correctly. Usually a good rule of thumb is your video did well. If it gets more views than your channel has subscribers, because that means people who aren't subscribed to your channel yet have actually seen the video. That is generally speaking what you want. If your video gets more views than you have subscribers, well done. And reaching that when you have a small channel is totally possible. Like if you have 10 subscribers, and you get 20 views, that's well done. Good job. <laughs> and just gotta keep that up till, till the numbers start getting higher and higher and then hopefully eventually you'll get there. Your first video will therefore be 
always a success, even if you get only one person who watch it. And don't forget, creating YouTube videos, especially in the beginning, is kind of a grind. Uh, you shouldn't get discouraged too easily. You need to keep at it. YouTube um, or, or usually growth on any social media platform is usually exponential, which means you won't see a lot of growth at the beginning. And then later on, you'll see more and more exponential growth. As your channel is bigger, it's easier to get new subscribers. So that just means you have to be quite patient at the beginning. You have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to maybe put out with videos for a year or two without all that many people watching. And then, of course, depending on how good your videos are, your channel will grow faster or slower. But like it, it, it'll take you at least 30, 40 videos before anything happens. Um, just got to pre be prepared for a little bit of grind at the beginning. Also, never forget to be proud of all the stuff you already have achieved. It sounds a bit weird, but if I was able to create it, I would be so happy for myself because I could just go around and be like, oh, hey, look at this. I just made this awesome new game and stuff and be proud of it. But I guess the most important thing is that you are enjoying the stuff that you are doing. The, the number one thing to stay motivated is, of course, you have to enjoy what you're doing. If you enjoy making videos, then staying motivated will be a lot easier. Actually, my biggest advice would be to stay motivated. <laughs> keep doing what you're doing and make sure what you're doing is enjoyable because if you're doing something that you don't particularly enjoy you won't stay motivated as i previously said i've had other youtube channels but i didn't post on them as regularly as i am right now because i didn't enjoy what i'm doing so i think if you're trying to start out find something that you enjoy and that will kind of keep you motivated and you'll seem real and you'll be able to grow through that don't compare your success with other people if you, for example, just hit your first 100 subscribers, that's awesome. Celebrate yourself. You might think that this is not as great as having 1000 subscribers, so you're less successful than uh, me. But if you follow this logic, then I'm not as successful as Jonas, for example, and he isn't as successful as some other game dev YouTubers. That's probably why he said this. I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm super successful yet on YouTube. I'm, I mean... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is always someone who is more successful than you and the grass on the other side is always greener. Don't get discouraged by numbers. If you give your best, make a nice video, upload it to your channel, then you already are successful. <laughs> the reason why I'm somewhat successful, why people like watching my videos is probably because I'm willing to learn. I put a lot of effort into my videos. I had the patience to push through at the beginning. Like my videos were not really good, not very good two years ago. I started with daily videos, which, which is actually not a super bad thing to do if you're just starting out because it really lowers that hesitation, that doubt about uploading something and just learn. You gotta be willing to upload some cringe and garbage as well, maybe. <laughs> now, let's just wrap this video up with the most important advices my guests have for you. Always make the videos you want to make. Don't give in too much to what, what kind of videos people want from you. The most important thing for both you as well as for, for your audience is that you make videos you enjoy making because that will make the videos a lot better and that will also make your videos more enjoyable to watch. So in the end, everybody wins if you just make the kinds of videos you want to make, make the kinds of videos you want to make. Be genuine. Don't, un unless, you're, unless you're going for like joking, in which case humor is hard, so be funny, but in general, if you're honest about what you're doing and you really actually care about the stuff that you're talking about, that's gonna come through. So as honestly as you can, explain the things you are. Don't be afraid to share your to share places where you failed. I think that's another one too. If you don't share your failings, you don't come off as relatable to people. Like people people wanna understand that yes, you've done something cool, but also, you know, you struggle to get there because that just makes you it makes you more relatable, more personable. 
and people really get drawn to that. So I'd say just, yeah, be genuine and show if you really like what you're doing, you know, get excited and show people that. Wow. Let me tell you, talking with these guys and girl really inspired me to further improve my content to give you the most value possible. Make sure to check out these amazing people and subscribe to the channels which are linked in the description. And tell me what do you think, which advice is most important for you? Write it down in the comments. I hope I see you in my next video and until then go out and create awesome content. Yeah, put some nice music behind that as well. <laughs> <laughs>